Well, we've been talking all month long about critical cultural issues with renowned author and speaker and radio Bible teacher Chip Ingram. He's the author of this book that we're offering to you this month. It's entitled Culture Shock, A Biblical Response to Today's Most Divisive Issues. You know, all around us, we're inundated by a hypersexual culture, television, film, magazines, billboards, and the web. Uh, Chip joins us now. Chip, can you explain how the sexual revolution of the 1960s fast-tracked us to where we are today in relation to human sexuality? Yeah, John, I think there's probably four or five things that have occurred uh, in the last 40 or 50 years that have just fast-tracked us into the revolution that is unparalleled in its speed in terms of the morals and sexual practices uh, of 50 years ago and say today. First is the, is the philosophical one that we've talked about. If there isn't a truth, and if it, that bleeds into the church even, then there's no right, there's no wrong, then um, that's going to be applied in multiple areas. And then in the, in the 60s especially, there was a desire for freedom. Remember the Vietnam War and the establishment, you had Nixon, you had lie, lying and, and different things where people were throwing off authority because they couldn't trust it. Well, they threw off authority in the sexual arenas as well. You know, make love, not war. I can still remember. And I remember when they went to co-ed uh, dormitories and, you know, as a, as a young person, I remember walking to the guy's bathroom about, you know, eight o'clock in the morning and realizing there were two girls in the guy's bathroom, realized, you know, the world has really changed. And, and then I think the things that happen is the laws begin to change, so the mores that got broader and broader. 1969, no-fault uh, no divorce. Uh, so now, if you want to get divorced, you can just get divorced. 1973, Roe versus Wade. Uh, you know, abortion has always been. Uh, from ancient times, to 1800s, it has always been a means of birth control, no matter what anyone says. So, so pretty soon, if there's an unplanned pregnancy, you can get rid of that baby. And so you, you've got philosophical issues, the search for freedom. And then I just have to say, I think the church really blew it. I think historically, I mean, even Martin Luther said the only reason to have sex was to have children. Maybe that's why he had so many. <laughs> but, but, you know, the church, uh, the Victorian period, it was sex was dirty and bad. So we didn't teach what the Bible says about the beauty of sex and intimacy and relationship, or uh, the church began to respond very negatively. You know, there was sort of this backlash of don't do this and don't do that. And all young people heard was wait instead of a better and better way. And so I think all those things together have caused the sexual revolution, both now inside and outside the church, to really blow up in our face. And now we've seen the destruction of the family. We see diseases. It has had horrific impact. And we in the church need to teach about sex winsomely from the scripture and then model it to experience God's best. You know, Chip, you make some great points there. God created sex, and for far too long, we've been silent about human sexuality in the church. And I really appreciate that you've helped us start another critical cultural conversation. Uh, there are more topics that Chip covers like human sexuality. Uh, he covers areas of politics and uh, abortion, the environment, talks about the church from a critical standpoint as well, and makes some great observations. It's in this book, Culture Shock, as I offered you this month. We really want you to understand more God's plan for human sexuality, God's plan for us to be engaged in the culture. 